In this video, we're going to be discussing signs of an infection. Topics in this video include superficial infections, deep wound infections, and systemic infections. So starting off with superficial infections, these are um, an example here is this picture you can see here. Uh, basically, often uh, seen around areas of sutures, staples, incision sites, uh, cuts to the skin. These are uh, uh, very close to the top of the skin infections. They're non-limb threatening infections. Some signs include uh, new areas of breakdown and necrosis. That's, that's a big one and that's related to darkening tissue. If you see increasing areas uh, of darkening tissues, that can be a sign of infection. Another big one is increased um, discharge from, from the wound and uh, it's important to remember that there's some discharge is um, it's absolutely normal for an infection it's a part of the healing process but if these uh, these uh, fluids are increasing and increasing and becoming like a uh, almost like a pus you're gonna it's, uh, it's gonna be something to take note of and uh, of course foul odors can also be a sign of an infection Moving on to deep wound infections, these are, are limb threatening infections and they are pretty much exactly what they say they are. They're infections that go beyond the skin. Common signs include uh, pain. These can be very painful. This can lead to a significant amount of edema or swelling. Redness of greater than, uh, greater than two centimeters around the, uh, the wound. And uh, it's, it's, it's important to note that whether or not this is increasing or, or decreasing goes along with the next point as well. You want to make sure that the, uh, the size of the infection is staying the same or getting smaller. If it's, uh, if it's getting bigger, it's going to be a cause for concern. Satellite areas are also a very bad sign in uh, deep wound infections. Basically what this means is that the infection is, if you had, for example, uh, a cut on your elbow or something that, that has become infected or um, so, so some other uh, like a like a deep wound infection it's, it's showing up at in other places undermining and tunneling um, undermining is when there's a wound and then um, you can almost peel up the skin and feel under wound and tunneling is a uh, is a it's, it's similar but um, it, more of a tunnel shape than a uh, than a, a lifting of the skin around the wound. Another thing is probing to the bone. So oftentimes uh, nurses take Q-tips and uh, they uh, it's like sterile sterile Q-tips and they they poke into the bone they poke into the wound and uh, measure it. And depending on how deep it goes, it can be considered a deep wound infection. And obviously, if you touch a bone, it's a it's a very deep wound. Uh, Flu-like symptoms are also a sign of deep wound infections as well as uncontrollable or uh, erratic glucose for the patient. It's remembered that uh, to look at each patient individually, sometimes patients just they, they, they normally have glucose. They're diabetics and they can't, can't uh, control their glucose very well. And uh, sometimes it can be a sign of infection, so it's important to take everything into consideration. So systemic infections are um, things like, like like sepsis, where it's it's gotten into your blood and, and it's affecting your entire body. So these include everything that uh, deep wound infections have, plus fever, rigor, chills, hypotension, multi-organ failure, basically the stages of sepsis. And I have a video coming out, I think it should be just after this one. It'll be coming out on the stages of sepsis. This is absolutely, this is going to be an absolutely important video for any nursing student or medic to watch. Lots of important information on uh, how um, on how uh, sepsis progresses. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and look out for uh, that video on uh, sepsis that should be coming out next week. And if you have any other recommendations for videos, uh, please comment below.